Greetings, ladies and gentlemen. We're on to day number two of Solo Self Found Crucible League. I'm playing a Volcanic Fissure Totem Chieftain going full in with Ancestral Bond, so I cannot damage anything myself. It has to come from totems, traps, maybe minions. Uh, so we can drop four of these volcanic fissure totems to do damage. That's what we've got going on. Today, my goal is to explore how we can use Crucible to try and target farm uniques. Because I am looking for Tukahama's Fortress, which is an ebony tower shield. Prior level 61, so here in Act 9, I can start getting this base to drop. So the idea is I find ebony tower shields, I try and find a zone where I can procedurally farm the crucible and just start like rolling passive trees on these shields and see if i can get the cells for a unique everyday tower shield unique passive on there that i can work it into and try and sell it but there's a second unique chernabog's pillar ebony tower shield also could be the result of that so if one of them is more rare, it might have some weighting to it, so we'll find out. If it's pretty simple, we might be able to force farm my totem shield here in SSF before I even get to maps. So that is the main goal for today, as well as ideally getting to maps. And I'm getting started on this one early because yesterday's video was so long, it's gonna take a while to upload, so I'm going ahead and getting started on this while that uploads. I try to shoot for 30 minutes on these videos, but there was a lot of testing and exploring things in episode one of this journey, so things should simplify themselves a bit going forward. I'm having a lot of fun with the build so far. It, it's very different play style than I'm used to using the totems and I just kind of it can hands free and let them do their thing for the most part and that's what we're going for here. I can curse with my flame ability. I can use Scorching Ray to apply fire exposure. See how this enemy's on fire now? It doesn't last super long, but we can shred a lot of resistances that way. And it's going well. I'm surprised at how well the build is doing at this point. I was expecting far worse out of this, but it's going. And we're just getting started with it. So let's go. We're just going to take down the door of the fortress pretty fine. What about syndicate members well, i can't make them target the healing totems unless i put them on top of the totems which it looks like i have to do okay now they should start wailing on him oh here's our first ebony tower shield wow that is a really good siege axe too i got the dex and int craft i needed for this amulet 20 to dex and int means i can put that on that's a lot more life over 200 life there next passive point i'm gonna get more life start getting these life masteries almost a 4k a horde of madness to see if this shield's any good this one actually hasn't been the worst they're still super tanky though i don't think it gave me enough to actually oh yeah it did okay so 60 life minus res avoid being shocked with increased chance to be frozen so this one cannot turn into unique though iron wood armor per summon totem extra defense worry might be the spot i'm gonna go ahead and go for this eight percent attack speed oh no not invulnerable okay we just skipped that one i think go next i think the best place to try and farm the shields is probably off these magic enemies that are in all the corners of the quarry they're gonna drop some amount of items it'll be good xp as well oh galvanic hammer has five percent pin on it i should probably go grab that although these are accuracy nodes i don't know that's that's the greatest 4k life level 67 ebony tower shield number two 50 percent increased implicit modifier magnitudes so that raises the flat strength on top determination aura effect and reservation that's cool life on block you could only pick one of those one's also a bust back to it i have a passive point what am i working on here isn't this you count as on low life while at 55 percent of maximum life below a bad thing there's enemies that do extra damage while you're on low life hmm. i think i'm gonna go in here and get bone breaker next just stack some more area of effect 
Whoa, rare item in the vendor. I think I preferred it when these vendors would refresh each time. Then I could level and look for shield. They definitely aren't dropping here as often as I thought they would. Ooh, a Mortimorsu. It's nifty to have. I pushed all the way through the end of Hero of Act 9. Never got a single shield. I have it showing up the white and magic versions of the shield still nothing now we got the depraved trinity the scorching ray exposure isn't too terrible once you've got it up then i have like two and a half seconds almost just to tap it once to reset the stages and then i can kind of move around a lot more i can keep that exposure up it's just getting in the initial eight stages you got to get the eight stacks but i have faster casting and increased duration on my scorching ray to hopefully make that better Better. It's only like a second and a half that I need to cast it to get it up, and then I can just do little short bursts every now and then. The harder things, a lot of times, is seeing if the flammability curse is still being applied. An easy boss. Vol Firestorm and Vol Blade Flurry. Vol Firestorm looks super juicy. Do Merc Lab. Still no shields. Ooh, Argus. Ooh. Ow, he hurts! Just keep endurance charges up. That'll make it fine. And here's Bone Breaker. It's a lot of extra AoE. Ooh, here's an Ebony Tower Shield. Finally. Ooh, curses. And dual swords. Yep. We are getting rid of these. Extra crits? Always crits. Wow. Yeah! Massive shrine. Alright, this should be pretty simple. I'd like to hope. The AoE is ridiculous, but it's also fantastic. And got him. Three chests. Dying Breath and an Ignamon. Armageddon brand activation frequency. That's a pretty nice helm enchant. All right, I have to look now. What helmets do I have in here? Nope, it goes on the helmet that I'm using. Now for the Ascendancy. I was thinking a little bit about this node here, which effectively is 40% physical damage as extra fire. Now I have Herald of Ash, which is 15 physics extra fire. And I have 37 physics extra fire from the gym. So that's 52 physical as extra fire. So effectively, over time, I, I think this loses its effect, really. And then if I were to get something like a Nebulok, even, that has even more physics extra fire. Oh no, what I'm, what I'm getting at, I think Namahu Flames Advance might be bait in the end. I don't know if this cover, I mean, it's just, this is just for rare and unique enemies cover an ash, but I'm not doing any damage to Leech's life. Cleansing Water is a very strong defensive node. War's Herald is as well. And I'm curious about this activation range. This is also a bit more area of effect, which is up to 18%. So that's 18% AOE and Totem's Leech to me. Storm's Embrace, though, I could use Infernal Cry to generate Endurance Charges, and then I could set up a Castle of Damage taken Immortal Call for extra defense, and then if I get hit and lose the Endurance Charges via Immortal Call, then I'll actually get more damage out of this. And I think that 15% more damage in the end is more effective than the damage I get off of here. Plus that Life Regen just adds to the brick wall that this character is. Gives me chance to gain endurance charge on kill, but I can't really make use of that. I might go for this next time, but for now, I want to see what the Ancestor Totem activation range is. And I shouldn't do it here because I have a massive shrine. So before I could get like just off screen before the buff went off. <sighs> so the increased area effect might have changed that that I've gotten recently. That AoE goes so far. I want to see these totems off screen something. I don't know. I, I I think that activation range is probably for the buff. So all this does is give me the totem leech to me, which is not bad. It's definitely a good thing. And some AoE. Hmm. I still haven't checked out the shield that I'm wearing. I understand that I'm making these hard by powering them all the way up, but none of them have seemed as awful as the lightning balls. So 20% reduced damage for 60 life. That's pretty awful. Minus 3% block for aggressive bastion. That's that's worthwhile. 25% chance to block projectile spell damage. Reduced max mana, increased mana recovery rate. Increased chance to be poisoned, but big chance to avoid bleed. Huh. Well, I don't like lowering my damage, that's for sure. I mean, the shield isn't great either. It's gonna change. But I had to know. Wow! They just a. Uh 
obliterated me. Okay, Ebony Shield. Blazing Salvo projectiles fork when they pass through a flame wall. That is awesome. Wow, that seems like it'd be fun to play with. Poison Avoid, double damage, strength blow up. 150% increased implicit modifier magnitudes. So this is my first five deep tree I've seen. So this is also like the first 68 plus item I've crucibled. Interesting. I'm kind of wondering now if GMP is worth on this. I know my next support gym absolutely should be fire pit, but, and, th and then probably melee elemental damage or even melee uh melee fizz has a lower attack speed it's this level i want totems to taunt enemies uh no if i'm running around war cries i don't know that i want that action speed cannot be lowered below base value that's good can this guy kill me with his slap mm, don't look like it it can hurt that's for sure i have stood right here this entire fight so far i've also not pushed a life blast yet oh need more totems uh, i had to push a life blast there the totems went down oh i am just a tad under on cold res of being capped hey ebony shield in the vendor glad i checked that seems pretty reliable to be able to find the crucible in the quarry just in this like basic square from the waypoint every time i've needed it i've been able to find it no not the balls all right we do a different one i just don't care <laughs> i've learned hmm. so if i don't complete the crucible i don't get any of the progress that i juiced into it so if i if i want any of this xp on this weapon i have to complete this encounter and this one also has balls in it things actually die when you don't juice it all the way up though that's that's nice. Okay, I cleared all of that one, but it wasn't enough to get me the passive tree. Okay, so I did complete it, so it does power it. What now? 10% resistant modifier magnitudes. Minus two max fire res plus three max lightning res. That's crazy. Lightning damage fizz taken as lightning. That's really good. Reduced life chaos res. Yikes. Reduce life, life recovery rate. Increased effect of chill on you for increased effect of chill. All of those seem kind of yikes. But being able to stack an additional bit of resistance could let you use that jewel to make all of your max res equal your highest. Okay, that is enough resistance to get me through. I probably have a better chance of finding shields and maps where I can juice quant even more. And then hopefully I can keep going back to the quarry to check their trees probably stay on this fire i sure can totems leeching life to me oh yeah easy boss just stand here hold down right click with my beam and wait until my totem duration wears out because that's a thing that can happen i'm gonna stand in the big fire doesn't do any more damage than the other one. Oh, i oh, i guess standing in this thing too i have such an absurd amount of life on this character there we go time for maps I'm excited for maps because we got a whole new shuffled atlas and it's such a breath of fresh air into end game every single league. Last time I got total mastery. I think next I go for this fire damage, even more area of effect, or I could get another recovery mastery here. Uh, I don't know if I need anything from that. There's a bunch more life regen though, or I push into here and get this. Yeah, I'm going to go get Galvanic Hammer because that's fire pin. Okay, we got Scriptorium, Alleyways, Colonnade, and Bone Crypt. I already have two Bone Crypts. I haven't done a Scriptorium in a while, so we'll do one of those. Ooh, Monsters Reflect Elemental Damage. Level 72. And I got my totems trying to take down the Sap Suckers. The Sap Suckers are kind of like those balls from crucible except these things are just annoying they don't murder you as well order crafting station now available defeat at least 10 tier 3 or greater harvest monsters in a single map complete i fought one rare monster nice i got a blight in my first map too pretty easy totems just kind of took care of it got three oils that's uh the beef combination i think and monies so i have a t1 map that is technically usable to farm a shavs that's not something i've done in years unclaimed curex vault pass reward um i don't like the fact that it gives currency rewards and stuff Wait, is, what's 300 points the 30 dollars for a couple mystery boxes and igneous armor set uh no oh claim it how do i claim it so i open this out here i get disconnected from the server okay right again travel to curex vault oh 
Orb of Horizons. Well, they made this pretty obnoxious. Or you can't, like, miss that if you make it to maps. Okay, so that should be done. Have my map device. Progress. Okay, next I need my heist locker. It sucks, you can't store heists unless you come run this. And then if you come run this, then you're going to get the heist quest things, which you used to be able to avoid and put off until you were ready to do it ice locker here oh there's the button maybe i just needed to come here and click the button and then it would have started storing stuff it's okay this character should be tanky enough to handle this if i wanted to do heists hey heist locker decoration now available cool oh and i have two kirak missions right off the bat i'm not gonna set any speed records clearing these maps it seems but hopefully we'll we'll get it figured out five link would be massive wow that hurt you not have spell suppression so that's something i'll have to be cautious of i guess it looks like I can max out on resists maybe Pack of divination cards and a belfry that could be like 10 chaos i don't know if that's worth the target of this behemoth mace implicit attack speed interesting that's a good thing about this character well it's not gonna be the fastest thing ever it's gonna be real hard to die so i'm gonna get xp pretty easily as long as i just stay out of my hideout which i'm generally pretty good at another five percent ellie pin though that's gonna juice the damage a bit yay ebony tower shield this is literally the only thing i'm looking for right now i haven't been identifying anything i'm not trying to upgrade anything just farm shield if i fill up all my quad tabs I will identify stuff, but until then, that is one of my tricks to stay out of my hideout, though. I don't get caught in identifying stuff after every single map and saying, ooh, that's shiny. No, I'm going to identify tabs of stuff at once and just do a pause gear upgrade and then go back to it. Makes it real quick and easy. The tower shields, though, that is a different story now i wonder can i just keep going back to the quarry now if coming to the quarry to do this is cheesing it they could make the crucible monsters spawn kind of dependent on the item level of the weapon you put in weapon or shield yikes ah everything keeps teleporting to me maybe i do need to get that totem taunt node or maybe i get, need to get the infernal cry and actually use it come on i please what we get mana on block Quality, Breeze Avoid, Guard Skill, Cooldown Recovery. Okay, go next. There's an infested valley in here now. But these Atlas missions change. Oh yeah, the game just dropped Scarabs. Ooh, two directions for Blight. Um, this is kind of terrifying. I don't know that I can afford to split my totems. Seems to be going okay. Blighted Dunes map. Dunes is T2. That's cool. 74. Oh, I got Galvanic Hammer. Now what? Like, I'm getting like 100 life per level. I think, I think I just have to do more damage. Honestly, I, you know what I should do right now? I have enough refunds to swap this into this Endurance Charge. And I should spec into the Mace nodes instead of these nodes because placement speed is not my issue. 16% with Stun Duration. 16% with Stun Threshold. I think Stun Threshold is probably more likely to be helpful. Kind of full sending this expedition. Hopefully this doesn't end poorly. The big pack size, big damage with coal. But it, it is nothing compared to the Crucible monsters. And a Burial Medallion. Yeah, these enemies are easier and i feel like in a lot of cases expedition is just going to be more rewarding than the crucible first look at a new breach i'm lost relic oh that's the a div card for expedition map excavation not expedition yeah i didn't see any hands or even rares i don't think Colonel cry covers enemies in ash so that's going to lower their movement speed and increase fire damage taken. Affected enemies explode when they die, so not when you kill them. I think this is the play here. Now to find out, can the totems handle reflect map? Looks like it. Doesn't look like they're taking any damage at all. Fine by me. Yep, those enemies sure explode. Okay, need to lower the cooldown on this infernal cry. So it can be a little bit more effective for me. Oh, these maps did change. The rewards did not change, but the stack of divination cards is now in an infested valley. Hmm. Well, the good Warcry cooldown is right here. I can remove all damaging ailments when I Warcry. 
That's interesting. Flash passes. I did not go get the passive from the way forward. Act one. Mm, okay. A really good one though. Uh, so that is skull cracking. 36% more fizz damage. I haven't seen this boss in a minute. How to dodge a rock. During this phase, run around. Those things don't stack under you. Okay. Ebony tower shield. Finally, the rate we're going, even with the thief's torment, it's like one every four maps normal magic or rare crazy i was expecting to like go go into maps and like pull three or four out of a map and just go back to the quarry oh no did i did i out level my ability to spawn crucible in the quarry looks like it well okay can't de-level yourself anymore so what's the play now ossuary maybe yeah let's try that yep there's one in here. The Infernal Cry could really help with this, potentially. Got it. 20% chance to block spell damage. No chance to block. 30 life. Movement speed with low dex. That's good for a armor shield. And then stun and block recovery and lower stun threshold. 100% freeze avoid. Increased chance to be ignited. That's, that's insane. Increased armor evasion ES and reduced reflect damage taken. This tree is pretty cool. We need to start getting gems leveled here. I think I take a determination. I need a melee fizz, I think. Elemental damage with attacks. Eternal blessing. Fire pin. Ooh, I can get this cast one damage taken. Immortal call going. Oh, we can throw a petrified blood into level. Tempest shield's probably good to have leveling. Still have a bunch of open sockets too. We put increased duration on the flame ability. Uh, the base duration's 10 seconds. It's really not bad. That's good. Or geez. Have four glass blowers we can craft a quicksilver flask reduce charges attack speed sure hey another tower shield you know what? i could probably just do this in the map oh blows my mind how difficult this stuff is it's wild what do we get no unique recover one percent of life on kill i guess since this is white i can chance it i should do that on the normal basis because that can give me the shield as well Ooh, steel skin prevents the immortal call from going off because it's a guard skill level 76 i'm taking call to arms and moving my infernal cry to left click uh, i will have my charges up as often as I can. Three fields. That's new. I haven't seen that one in a while. Cemetery Shores T6. Oh, rip ritual. What do we have here? Need the chance orbs. Anything else here I really direly needing? 75 life on a studded belt. Probably not. Discharge damage. Big flat fizz on this two-handed maul so i take the rogue markers wait a second divine fury this is extra fire five fire pin for three points there Maybe that's what i do next and that'll let me have this mastery hmm. reduced effective exposure on you and that's something i don't know that we can really get anywhere else i was originally just looking at divine judgment for the 50 percent elemental damage but i didn't like the nodes on the way there but five fire pin is definitely worth okay so now the div cards is an orchard map that one i think is worth doing that could be six link bow Maybe i should look at the mods on this void ailments aoe okay that's fine oh it's her mask i just realized that i forgot the increased duration for the immortal call definitely need that Ooh, that beam can't really hurt me that's cool Oh, those can hurt though. Forest touched. Does this mean you're gonna drop me something crazy? Oh! <laughs> okay, we've got a six socket. Six socket breeds embrace. We've got Centrex, Pillar of the Caged God, and then more six sockets. Iron Fury, Corrupting Blood Jewel, Totem Res, Lightning Damage. Not the worst thing to have. Take the Chance Orbs, take the Screaming of Zeal and the Horizon, and a Quality Gem. Solid. T5 Marshes, Moon Temple, 20% Delirious, that's cool. All Pyramid, yeah. Why well, I've been buying the Chance Orbs, because now I'm out. So I spend Usings to buy Chance Orbs. Yeah. New Atlas mission. Doesn't have anything crazy here. Level 77. So the goal now, I believe, is to start trying to reroute into the cooldown recovery 
for the war cry, which could mean eventually pulling out of all of this down here as well. I don't know. But first, I just connect this on the outside, then I can strip the middle. What is that? Blood-soaked medallion. Crit chance, life, chaos res. Every 10 seconds, gain 2% of life per enemy hit for 5 seconds, and life per kill for 5 seconds. I feel like I've never seen this before, ever. Which makes me think I have to have it. Lost me to chaos here. I defer the chaos. Okay, these are consecutive, so it swaps between life per hit and life per kill. Max roll on the life. Interesting. Wait a minute. That's Aberath and Kitava touched? Not on the same enemy, is it? Brian King touched Kitava touched on the same enemy. Oh, cool. I got this level just in time for this thing to kill me. Wow. This was one of the craziest rare enemies I've ever fought. Wow, it did end up killing me. I now, please. Ah. Whew. Ooh, six socket in the vendor. We're all sure. I've not seen a shield in so long. Feels like it, it blows my mind how many rare items drop. And there, I'm sure, sure enough, there's a bunch of normal and magic items as well. And I've gotten like six of the shield base that I'm looking for. And yep, yeah, all I had to do is complain. There's the shield. Rip. This is extra lightning. Oh, no exposure. So I shouldn't even be using my scorching ray at all. Yeah, if you can't kill these guys quickly, all three of them get out here or stack each other. They can be pretty gnarly. I'm qualifying this one. Chance it first. Okay. I honestly think I might have been level 75 last time I came in here. I guess I had one in the colonnade map, but I'm now level 78 and this still spawned in here. Good. Cycling damage reduction on these enemies. That is pretty brutal. I still think this one's dying faster than a devourer because the devourer spends half of its time underground. Ah, they killed me. It was so close. Okay, what do we get? Storm Blast, Icicle, and Pyroclast Mine have 150% increased aura effect and do and deal no damage. Strange. Chill on block. Hard skill. Hold on. Recovery rate. Gain frenzy charge on kill with reduced frenzy charge duration. Spell block armor. Well, it's another five. It's the second five tree I've seen. Ooh, tormented boss. Wow. It's very fast. Oh, it gains frenzy charges and possess. That's why. And a metamorph. Fractured armor. Two stone ring. It's a barracks. Another Kyrax Vault Pass reward. For the third time now, the game's like, hey, you want to buy this thing? I still don't, though. Ooh, a Legion. There's, there's no way I'm going to do much with this. I'm pretty sure this is like, find a chest and drop the totems on it. Uh, you. Currency. Oh, come on. I didn't have enough time to take out the one enemy I was focusing. Ah, oh, level 79. First time I've seen my totems taking damage in a long time. The frost bolts here, freezing pulse even. They take a little bit, it, it comes right back, but I saw it, the health bar move. Alrighty then, this passive point connects this and eat some regrets up. I'm dropping some damage here, but that's okay. Everything is still all connect, connect there. So then I can pull out of these. Probably the five all res there as well. Yeah, that's fine. So that gives me five points. War cry, cool down, cool down, cool down, cool down, remove, bleed, and poison when I war cry. So my left click move will now work like my I use my steel skin for for the remove bleed on move. It's huge. Oh, that's gonna go off so much more often now. Yes. Coat everything in ash. And that was another 10 intelligence. So that is more faster casting, more flammability levels. Although flammability is the thing that drains my mana. It is it is the one thing that gets me. It's about time to empty the dump as well. We're getting there. So that means I should go run these heist things before I want to empty that and they're sitting in my inventory. That is the worst. Lock picking two. Oh, I guess I can't even do that one. Oh yeah. This is gonna drop lots of stuff. Ruthless Heist dropped nothing. Ooh, screaming Essence. Mm-hmm. Six sockets. All right. Now I'm gonna have to start making choices. And right, now to get out of here. Mortal Call will definitely help, but... Ooh, Voltaxic Flash Powder. That's worth more than those boots. 
Ow. Oh, another six socket. Too bad. Oh, there's two security specialists on top of each other. And a head enforcer. Run! <laughs> I don't think I'm geared well enough to survive hits of that, even though I have the life. I haven't re-geared since, like, Act 9. Okay, Smuggler's Den. This one's much safer. Leech is life. Life region. Life cannot be leeched. Humility. It's the first one of those. Ebony Tower Shield. Is that the one I'm looking for? It is. And this is always the worst. When you're getting swarmed with these enemies and you gotta make inventory decisions. A torn cloak. That's pretty huge to find. Panic Fissure level 19. Five link bow. Okay, so now I can't run this last one, but I want the inventory spot back. I can put it in here as if I were going to run it, right? And then leave. And I can save it there in the uh, in Adia's little portal thing. All right, and seeing what's on this shield is more important than cleaning the stash. I find it kind of crazy that my totems are so unaffected by this stuff, but I get touched by anything from these monsters and I want to fall over. What did we get? Went to five again. Flicker Strike and Vigilant Strike's cooldown can be bypassed by power charges instead of frenzy or endurance charges. Nifty. Attack hits have a chance to maim you, but immune to exposure? That is massive increased hatred effect and hatred reservation these mods are insane spell suppression you lose spell suppression if you've suppressed spell damage recently that's not super useful Golden fire 45 life wow add it to the pile okay so now to go through all the stuff got five and a half tabs worth of items and hopefully that means that I will find some good things in there and then I will have options to re-gear myself being an SSF and see how many maces do I have there's a few so ideally we get a weapon out of this that that would be fantastic all right all of the tabs are cleaned out here's what we ended up with so there's a few one-hand maces here that's the place to start the two-hander that has attack speed with fizz and ellie with attacks this would be an upgrade where i had to put it on and then there's a rock breaker has fizz flat fizz i'd have to craft attack speed on this but this is the lower base i think it goes stone hammer then rock breaker then gavel so the base damage on this isn't great but this one this barbed club is in the same boat. It rolled fizz, flat fizz. There's not a spot for attack speed on that one. This gavel needs percent fizz, but it came with attack speed. This one could be a replacement here. Behemoth mace, open suffix for speed, has flat fizz and fizz, fizz accuracy. But then there's this one. This one's got a big attack speed. It needs flat fizz crafted on it, but T3 percent fizz this is just better than what i have right now no quality no passive tree no flat fizz craft so this is our new mall and i don't think there's any beating that out of the ones i have here but i could hold on to them should i want to go and see what they can get atlas passive wise but saving all of my stuff up and then having a bunch of malls to choose from finding the best one after filling quad tabs means I didn't spend any of my resources along the way trying to fit one of these maces in because I identified it earlier and it was good. I just know this is my next step and we go with that one. So let's get the flat fizz on here. Plus four chaos. We have 160 to 300 with a 1.43. It's pretty nuts. Worth qualitying, I think. So damage says 2,778 to 3,988. That's enormous. I will take it. Then shield options, I found two. One with a bunch of life, open prefix some all res or a little bit less life but a bunch of resists probably take the one with the more life here and then i can craft a prefix on this which if i hit 50 percent armor that would be 211 so this is better than the flat armor craft for sure resists are still okay not amazing but that's taken care of and then 
The next huge find that I found was this. This is going to be the new chess piece for sure for a while. Ideally, I want a chess piece with insane armor, an open prefix without life, and then resists so that I can make use of the new life mastery if there's no life modifiers on equipped body armor, 15%. And if I want the 10% more life, I need to get them all, so it's probably worth trying to at least make use of that passive point. And another big thing is this has chaos res, so really, really nice. Open suffix as well, so I can craft resists on this to shore up whatever needs fixing on that. But at the very least, it needs to be four linked. Chaos res is something I have needed badly. Also a pretty significant upgrade in armor 2759 to 4645 helmets the only thing i saved here was a dsi mask with big evasion es so i can't really do anything with that but i'll hold on to it so the helmet stays has rarity on it nothing super special there my gloves are pretty terrible though as are my boots though my boots have a lab enchant that's really good bunch of options for gloves as well as boots here. I think the best boots I have are probably, I mean, these ones are really good, not great life. I could craft life on this. These have resists. This one has life, needs movement speed, only cold res. All res needs movement speed. This one's big dex, but 30% movement speed. Actually, that these boots don't deserve to stick around. Or cold lightning chaos res needs crafted movement speed. Both of these need a little bit of dex, not much. So they're all possible there. And then gloves, this pair of gloves has a lot of int on it and no armor but flat fizz and resists life strength cold lightning res needs a tiny bit of dex i'm not even above 38 dex these gloves have fizz and attack speed with big dex int on an es base i feel like the issue i'm gonna have here probably lightning res only three rings in here what has life lightning res one has life dexterity and too much cold res life all res so this has it does have lightning on here if i could get out of this ring that would be cool but this is so much all res i guess put the good rings on that gives me the decks to open up all of these gloves and boots options and it's actually okay and yeah i need lightning res i gain more life in that process i have lightning on my boots currently these gloves open suffix good armor lightning res I'm a little short on fire. Take off the boots. They're pretty wide open. Go for maximized movement speed here, probably. Or if I went with these, I drop 5%, I can get the armor. Probably better. And then I craft life on that. And then I can probably get a little bit of fire res somewhere. I have craftable slots. Could maybe even replace this belt but what i'm more thinking about is removing these passives here which i would drop 20 all res and i'd lose some life regen here but i get all that life regen back right here really easily or i could just like cut that life regen and just have a little bit less and then go for the fire pin here because i'm gonna lose that fire pin on the boots i think things are looking pretty good there okay so what else is in here i didn't save any belts there weren't any good belts i kept all of the jewels none of them were super amazing this one has all res some int totem damage and then there's area damage damage with maces scepters fire cold res I, I think i want attack speed more than anything on those but hold on to jewels you never know when they might come in handy melee damage chaos res is pretty good as well but what else is in here there are a couple up other armor options like this one's pretty good but there's really no beating this with the chaos res on it and the all res this one's just better got a shield with big life evasion good resists another one that has a bunch of dexterity as well quiver that has good life and damage fractured attack speed on a corsair sword corsair sword that's rolled needs attack speed cast speed on a prophecy wand a really nice siege axe that's rolled chance to poison on a throat stabber claw and Fractured burning damage on a staff. So these things are all just getting stored for potential other builds. And hold on to the chests and things as well. So now I have a little bit of a base of stuff to gear other characters. Because I don't like to pull gear off of 
characters if I can avoid it. Actually, I don't know if I need to spec out of life regen for more damage considering I just super upgraded damage. And these boots need life sockets. And then I need blue, blue, red link. Don't have enough life force to change your resistance yet. Though I don't think any of this stuff is good enough to warrant spending that. All I need a chest. Loves definitely get tax speed crafted. Open suffix on this ring. Could be a little bit of attack speed. I think for now I just do the fire res. So now resists are good enough I can lose 20 all res. Then with those four points... Do I take combat stamina? Uh, gets me all of the region back and more. Plus life and armor. For three points, all of my stuff has armor on it. So I'm definitely going to grab the armor mastery. Actually, I've been thinking about maybe dropping like this whole segment of the tree. That's five points. I could connect this for three because I'm going to get the blood magic on the shield. I could also route it a different way and maybe get prismatic skin in the process i could get more endurance charges more life regen per endurance charge okay that armor is stacked quite a bit that was probably worth we take the plus one max res and there we go i think that's where it sits 8116 life regen with no endurance charges and that stacks up to 926 so almost 20 percent life regen per second that's pretty insane so uh, the next goal then is to reveal the passive tree on my new weapon. Oh, oh. Sidetracked by a little Tujin mission. Always got a peek. I got frozen and obliterated. Good. All right. Does this stuff just super die now? No. And it can freeze me too. Ah! There's probably something I can do about being frozen. The tankiness of these enemies still... It, it kind of has me wondering if you can't cheese this and... It spawns the monsters, maybe depending on the level of the item you're trying to forge. All right, what do we got here? We got flat cold damage. There's crit chance, 35% increased attack speed, but 20% less global damage. Into AoE, if int is low, don't have that. Reduce damage, increase damage for each time you've war cried recently. None of that is good. Less damage for 35% speed. Um, yeah, I don't know that we're doing anything with that one. And I go from that back to this expedition and things just kind of melt. It's strange, strange mechanic. I just don't understand, like, what I'm doing. Like, I understand I could stop it early, right? But there's really no gauge of the difficulty at all on it. I don't, I don't know. Another Tugent. Run back the whole thing. There's Soulfight in here. I'm gonna have to go dump Soulfight. Oh, and there's a Vol side area? Sure. We can do that too. Oops, Shikari touched. Bunch of rare items. I've only kind of been targeting items that would be good for this build. Plus, like, the top tier basis of things. We got Vol Spectral Throw, Ebony Tower Shield. I was running maps, Quant, Rarity, and a Thief's Torment, so another 12 Quant. Just run through the Ossuary, and then I get a shield. Ebony Tower Shield, that one's more important to see, I think. Ow! Chaos damage. Yikes. I need to fix flasks as well. I still, I'm using a giant mana flask. Ow! Eventually they die. And it, it must just be, I don't, I don't know, like, do different items require a different amount of holding down the thing? I felt like I had to hold that one down for so long to get it to give me the tree. There's level 80. What do we got here? This one goes all the way to the end. Shield charge and chain hook have 2% increased attack speed per 10 rampage kills. Stun, poison bleed, supported by level 10 impale, increased defense mods, chance to block, chaos damage fizz taken as chaos. Okay, acid point, definitely going towards this damage. I feel like this will change quite a bit once I can get into like red maps. Then you can start looking for like good high tier bases and then find a good tree on a base and then you can craft rather than just kind of getting a bad tree on your good weapon another ebony tower shield what and a unique helmet rebirth okay oh nice speed go give me shield yeah i normally just go tell the the no not the okay we got speed it's two rares too there's nothing i can really do except war cry scorching ray 
which doesn't help too terribly much. I'm okay with the tanky enemies, but these balls, it's absurd how annoying they are to fight. They're worse than the sap suckers in the harvest. What do we got here? Item sells for an additional magmatic ore. Not what I was looking for. I saw the shiny on here and I was like, ooh, maybe this is it. No. Precision effect and reservation. Hmm. Well, that's the first interesting thing that we've found on one of these. Now this time I would I would really like to crucible my shield. I would really hate it if the game gives me another ebony tower shield. That would just be the absolute worst. We don't want that to happen. I found the thing before it came. Now I wonder, I don't know what the magmatic ore is, so I, I might want to grind that out and see. Yeah, go next shield. Okay, this is the one with the devourer. Like, this is the one with the bleeds and fizz damage, I think. They seem pretty themed. You guys, if you get the lightning one, good luck. Because by comparison, like, I'm already almost done. It, it makes no sense. There's no way it can be item level based, right? Because this item level 69, and this one was 68. They're, they're like the same. What do we get here? 5% strength, 20 armor. That's crazy. That's really good. Three chance to block. Guard skill cooldown recovery rate. A reduced duration. That kind of hurts. I can get a 24% armor. Three chance to block is pretty good. I'm, I'm a ways out from wanting to do anything with the block though. Okay. We're up to 11 shields and this one has a magmatic ore on it. So I need to... I need to at least keep that one separate. Now let's just see how this is doing. Do a T6 map. Phantasmagoria should be easy too. Assassin bow, chin soul. Okay. Guess I can stop picking up those div cards that keep dropping all over the place. T7, forbidden woods. Oh, I click the abyss. Guess we're going for it. Give me this. Soul Eater, Fired, Ignite Resistant, Defeat a Stygian Spire. Was there a Stygian Spire? I didn't even see it. I was paying too much attention to the, the Soul Eater. Oh, there was two in there. I didn't visual clarity with this one. But to be completely fair, I created this mess myself. What? I'm this far into this map and now there's a ritual? What's in here? Fractured Life Regen, Fractured Lightning Res, Fractured Accuracy, Chaos, Easy Take. Really good XP out of this T6 map, like 35% of my level or something like that. Then we have Dodre with Maven. Not that bad. I haven't cursed at all. Come on. Almost there. Not too terrible. All right, we have the Maven Beacon, and we're capable of doing yellow maps still just for Link. I've had this blood magic on my mind like all day. I think the play is, I mean, I it's I could take blood magic myself without having the shield, but what happens then is I have to take off the Herald of Ash, I think, which is only giving me a 15% fizz is extra, and I'm not getting the overkill damage doing anything for me. So this is really not efficient um, conservation of my mana there, but I really don't have anything else that's super good. I could take this off and then throw on the determination instead, and then my armor go doubles, essentially. But then I'm more strained on the mana at that point. Like, I only get three or four casts of the curse before I'm out. But the play is... I think we throw on Eternal Blessing with Determination to reserve this for free. And then we just run the Vitality on the life, which would be far less impactful over there than it is over here. Because 221 life lost there, not too bad compared to how much mana that reserves. So we just increase the tankiness of it. And then maybe we could get the Herald back if I could get a ring from synthesis that gives me the mana reservation efficiency for a herald of ash maybe herald of ash buff effect on there as well would be cool but i i don't know that it's really doing too much for me i, I could drop the herald of ash and then just take the fizz's fire ascendancy that wouldn't be too terrible alternatively i could take cleansing water and be super tanky like never die to fizz damage pretty much at that point up to 449 life i don't think i have an attack mastery oh i, I don't think the mastery i was thinking of is here anymore either i thought there was something that made the strength one percent melee fizz per five strength into three something like that that might have changed that's a lot of life coming from the strength though and there's a lot of strength in here 
utmost might here. There's not much more easy damage to get outside of just, I guess, grabbing more mace nodes. But these ones are kind of crit based, so that's not the greatest. These ones aren't super good either, but damage. I think Bastion Breaker would even be better than these nodes here. I don't think I'm reliably stunning at all. So it might really be, we're pretty much there. I keep improving weapon, but getting the extra links would improve things substantially. And we just keep stacking life and make it super tanky. Atlas Passive Tree is about how my start normally looks almost to the double shrines that I kind of rush just to speed the Atlas progression up, which is kind of needed on this character, to be honest. It's a little slower, but we're making things happen with it. Finally got it geared somewhat decent. Armor's looking good. I'm, I'll start tomorrow off fixing these flasks. Um, but yeah, that is all I have for this. Like, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, definitely hit the like button as it really helps the channel out a lot. Subscribe, make sure you don't miss more videos from me. If you'd like to help support my channel, please consider using the super thanks to the heart icons just below the video or by joining to become a member. And I'll see you on the next one. Cheers.